Hey guys, welcome back to Orms TV. Now, as you can see, this is not a camera. Um, this is in fact a Blackmagic Atom Television Studio HD8 ISO. But we are going to tell you guys about it and this is actually really cool and really interesting and um, Matt's gonna do most of the talking. Yeah, so we're gonna run you through the physical layout, the front panels, the new sort of settings panel up the front there, everything that's going on in the back, and then we're gonna talk about sort of who we think this might be geared towards. We're gonna to kick it off by talking through the rear inputs over here. Um, and Matt's gonna tell you about that. In no particular order, we're gonna start out with the dual power supply, so through AC mains and a 12 volt, uh, which is very useful down here in South Africa, yep. losing power pretty often. We have a total of 26 SDI inputs and outputs. So these range between the video feed in and the camera control out. We've got then reference in and out, MADI in and out, time code in and out. And then we've got our auxiliary outputs. We've then also got our program output, multi-grid screen you can see here. There's an SDI out for that, as well as an HDMI out. The only HDMI out you'll notice on this unit. <laughs> Uh, and then once we get past the SDIs, we've got two USB-C ports. We've also got four Ethernet ports. There's also a TalkBack Ethernet port, as well as a TalkBack 5-point XLR output. We've also then got two channels of analog audio in, as well as a left and right stereo in. And then we've finally got two extra left and right outputs, uh, one of which are for the control out, so if you're feeding back into another audio mixer, and finally, the studio output, which are going to whichever speakers or any sound systems that you have at your venue. So there's the ISO, there's the normal HD8, non-ISO variant, and then there's also a 4K8. Yeah, so effectively all serve the same purpose, um, but they do have optional M2 internal storage, or you can record externally through the USB-C output, which is then going to capture the program out feed but the ISO model also gives you the ability to record all eight SDI video inputs which is pretty cool. And then the 4K8 is essentially the exact same thing but 4K in and out feeds through it. That unit's not available in an ISO. Simple reason is if you're running eight cameras running 4K each into a unit like this trying to record it yeah, it's just not gonna work, it'll just melt. So now that we've covered that, let's jump onto the front of this unit. Just starting out left to right here, um, on the bottom row here, we've got the little green buttons which give you the preview of your next feed. Um, up above the red buttons, is just gonna give you an automatic cut between your eight camera inputs as well as your media player one and media player two. Okay, and then right next to that is essentially the control for cutting between those cameras. So there's a little handle over here. It's actually referred to as a T-bar, I was just taught. So right next to that, you have the controls for that. So essentially how that cut is going to take place. And you have various options for it. And you also have control in the little screen at the top, it gives you sort of like a deeper control on what that will actually be. Right beneath that, you also have a auto. So if you don't want to use the T-bar, um, but you just want to be able to let the, the unit itself control the speed of the wipe or the transition. And all of these little things just give you that extra little bit of control, which up until now, A, required a much bigger unit or a lot more equipment to make it happen. And that's just kind of nice. Yeah, and as you move further over to the right, you'll see a group of buttons with a DSK annotation there, which of course stands for downstream key, which is something that's generally gonna be used for sort of graphic overlays, think, lower thirds or rolling titles, those sorts of things. So these units that we're showing you now, this is essentially the default that's built into this unit. Now what you can do is when you have the unit connected up to a computer or anything like that, you essentially download it into like an editable file that you can dump into Photoshop or similar programs. You can edit that, make it look however you want it to look and feed it back in again 
essentially as a media player interface, right? Correct. Okay, so um, that's really kind of nice, gives you a lot of options there, and it kind of just gives you a little bit more scope within a live production, which is kind of like where you'd see this sort of thing being, being used. And it's basically just integrating uh, a lot of features that you previously had to use the control software to achieve. They're now putting it sort of in the hands more of the one-man band kind of operation. Mm -hmm. So instead of having a several cameramen, one person to man the mixer, one person to man the computer, they're kind of just trying to bring everyone all together and have this one-man setup here. Okay. Okay, so take us to the next batch of buttons here. Yeah, so we're going to move up to the top left now of this main panel, which is, I think, a really cool uh, progression they've made with yeah. this unit. Um, so this is, for me, where the magic happens. So you've got, first of all, your audio controls, which is allowing you to sort of set your levels of audio coming in from each camera, as well as your EQ, your compression, kind of everything that you could really think of doing with your audio that you'd want to do that you previously needed an external sort of audio mixer for, so you'd feed all your camera audio into that and then feed it back to the mixer. It's now basically just bringing that all into one little panel. And you can do it uh, camera by camera, channel by channel, output by output. And then you can also, of course, solo the selected track that you want playing through your program feed. Yeah, so I mean, this is kind of huge, right? Because this is the first time that Blackmagic has done this kind of thing, integrating a complete audio mixer within a vision mixer that's pretty epic. And I mean, yes, like I get it. I don't really know what it's all about, but I do know that that's massively epic. Absolutely. And, and I mean, just going on from the audio control, the same little panel, the little push of a button, you now got your camera control which of course isn't gonna work with everyone's setup, but yeah. if you do happen to have Blackmagic studio cameras and you've got the STI out from the mixer back into the camera, you can actually control pretty much every single thing the camera can do. So you can control your focus position, your iris, your shutter speed, you can control your red, blue, green channels. I mean, it, it, it's basically, again, leaning towards that one-man band. You go and put your cameras, get the framing right, and don't touch them again. Everything else can be done from here, which I think, again, we keep on harping on about it, but it is just bringing everything all together in one sort of piece of equipment. Okay, so then next to your camera control and your audio mixer, you have essentially the controls for your auxiliary output. So imagine you are doing a live event, you've got a couple of screens up, and you wanna essentially control what camera feed you're placing onto one of those screens, you do it over here. So you can queue up your aux one or aux two, and then you can essentially just pick which camera you want to be able to put into that. Moving all the way over, now you get into some cool stuff. So you have a record, which is pretty straightforward. You hit that, the unit records your program out internally. Um, does it also record your, your camera feeds? At the yeah, same what's, yep. what's pretty cool with these is it's recording every single camera feed, and it's also, which you will be editing in DaVinci Resolve on this program, yeah. basically creates your, your little project file and exports it, so you just double click and it automatically follows the cuts that you've been making on your stream, but you can, of course, then go and shift between those. Okay. Um, then you also have a grab still, which is exactly what it says. It grabs a still image from your program, stores it internally. Um, there's a stop for the record, pretty self-explanatory as well. And then right next to that, you have a on air and a stop for said on air. And that's also really cool because that on air essentially allows you to immediately enable a live stream directly from this unit. And then of course, just rounding out this main panel, the big bad button that's got the big bevels next to it, don't push it by accident, yeah. is the, of course, fade to black, uh, curtains close, end of everything. Yeah, I feel like you said that, don't push it, <laughs> specifically so that I don't push it. Um, it's very tempting then, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do this. Right, so now that we've covered the big main pretty panel, I just want to briefly touch on where I think the brains of this whole unit actually come in, which is this sort of tilted LCD panel here. And we'll dive into it a little bit, but mm. in essence, I think what this panel is doing is essentially taking all of the software control and bringing it in here. So the amount of sort of customizability and little tweaks you can make to anything you can imagine that used to 
sort of hours of painstaking setup on the software is now all right in front of you. So you can sort of tweak on the fly if you're experienced enough and know exactly what you're doing. If you don't, you can rather sort of learn how to set all the little nuances up in here rather than setting it up there, not really knowing what's going on and then have something completely different here. So I think that's a really nice step that Blackmagic has gone. Again, still leaning towards the one man band operation, maybe for sort of smaller setups, people who don't want to bring their big boxes and multiple different sort of devices that all plug into each other. Yeah, I mean, it just, to me now, it just kind of makes a lot more sense than what it did previously, like when we, when we started this whole thing. Um, so, like my experience when it comes to this kind of thing is sort of like the Blackmagic 8 minis, you know, um, like uh, over here to the side we have the, uh, the like the Rodecaster Pro 2 from, from Rody, which I know is not a Blackmagic product, but like that sort of thing essentially in its entirety lives inside of here. It's like one little component of something like a whole podcasting setup, you know, a whole multicam connection that you can do right over here with all the controls, everything inherent in it. And as you said earlier, I mean, with that whole idea of being a one man setup, if you had this thing set up perfectly with the right cameras, the right lenses, the right cabling, all of that, I mean, you can run like a little, like I know it's not really a thing in South Africa, but like a community like TV station, mm. you know, um, think houses of worship set up. Blackmagic went and created something that combines a whole bunch of their other units. Everything in here and something that's a lot easier to understand, a lot easier to operate, something that's a lot more manageable. I mean, like this kind of thing, you dump it into like a Pelican case, you know, you're good to go. You rock up on location, you set up, you're ready to go within minutes as opposed to having multiple units, a whole separate streamer, a separate audio mixer, a separate, you know, um, vision mixer, probably multiple vision mixers if you're not gonna have like one unit doing all eight cameras and that kind of thing. It's just, oh, like it's massive and it's deep and it's so in-depth and I know that we literally scratched a tiny bit of the surface of this thing, but it's incredible and I kind of hate that it's all a little bit over my head because I'm a camera guy. I am not a whatever this guy is. 